안녕하세요. I hope you're having a great day. We're here in Boston, Massachusetts. Boston is a city rich with American history, and this is where the American Revolution started. And what better way to explore the history of this city than to eat and drink at the oldest establishments along the Boston Freedom Trail, such as Union Oyster House, Quincy Market, and the oldest tavern, Warren Tavern. So join us today as we discover this city through drink and food. Hi, we're Dave and Chloe, a married couple traveling the world to reconnect with our roots and seeking out new adventures. I'm from the US and my travels brought me to Korea, where I met Chloe. We got married and built our dream home in Daegu, South Korea. But 2020 hit us unexpectedly hard and we began to reassess our priorities in life. I resigned from my university position of 13 years and Chloe closed down her pub. We moved out of our home and began our journey around the globe together. Our first stop is the US, where I grew up. So come along with us as we explore the world through food, family, and friends. We are on our way to the Union Oyster House and we ran into the statue of Samuel Adams. And you all know that he is the guy who started the Samuel Adams beer. But no, really though, he was one of the revolutionaries that organized the revolution and signed the Declaration of Independence. So our first stop today is here at the Union Oyster House. It is the oldest restaurant in Boston, established in 1826, but the building itself is even older than that. And just as it suggests, this place serves delicious fresh oysters delivered every single day from Cape Cod. When you first walk in, the oyster bar is to your left and a fresh lobster tank. This place is beautiful. The place has so much historical memorabilia and has all this artwork all over the building. And this place is huge. It is four floors and every single room is unique on its own. So it's worth coming here multiple times and try to go to the different parts of the restaurant. John F. Kennedy used to frequent this restaurant when he was a senator and actually had his own booth on the second floor tucked in the back because he wanted to stay away from the crowd. Besides being a really cool place to visit, I hear that the food is amazing. So what is Union Oyster House like known for here? Hands down our clam chowder. If you've never tried it, I would absolutely recommend giving it a um, And then anything else? Probably our oysters. They come in fresh every single day. We have two Ooh. different kinds today, Kituit and Wealthweek. They're both from Cape Cod. Yield seafood platter is a little bit of everything. Okay. It is all fried, but everything on it, it's not super, super fried, so it's not heavy. So these top ones here, those are Kituit. Those are going to be a little bit saltier. These are Wealthweek. Those ones are going to be a little bit meatier. Oh, wow. Mmm, that's actually really good. It is quite salty, but the ginger cocktail sauce and the lemon juice, oh, it's so fresh. They apparently ship this in to the restaurant every single day, so they're fresh, fresh oysters. Oysters has always been a hit or miss in the US for me, but this is definitely delicious. Union Oyster House, you definitely have earned your name. This is really good. So this one's supposed to be meatier and less salty. Mmm, mmm. You know what, I don't know which one I like better. I might like this one better. This one I think is, oh, I don't know, they're both good. They're actually both pretty good. Let's find out what Chloe thinks. Our waitress, Brittany, recommended the New England clam chowder here. She said this is probably the one of the best you can ever have. Oh man, that is really good. Very thick, very rich, but not too heavy at all. And then the chunks of clams. Oh, and it's supposed to have oysters in here. It is a thick clam chow. Like we only got a cup, but I think it's more than enough. If you come to Union Oyster House, definitely I do recommend the New England clam chow. Mmm, really good. Wow, this is 우리 조개 스프 먹어봤잖아. 고기랑 비교할 수가 없어. 너무 맛있어 여기. 음. This is the fried seafood platter. It came with calamari. 음. Here, right. Let's try the legs. 음. Yeah, the batter's not too heavy. Do you see this fish? Wow, it's so soft and flaky. You can tell just by looking at it. The fish is so far the best. Wow, it is so moist, so flaky, so tender, perfectly cooked, not overcooked, with a light batter with that tartar sauce. That's my favorite so, so far. This looks like fried clams. 
Mm. Oh, the fish was my favorite before, but the fried clams are really good. They're supposed to be fried oysters. It's fried oysters. Mmm. The seafood here is definitely fresh. Nothing tastes fishy at all. Usually, when I get fried oysters or oyster something, there's always that slight fishiness to it, but that has no fishiness to it. And here's the shrimp. Everything's been so good. I'm so excited for the shrimp. Mm. Compliments to the chef. Nothing here is overcooked. Everything is fresh. Everything is tender, moist. Wow, you cannot go wrong with the fried seafood platter. Seriously, it is delicious. And then onion rings. I love onion rings. And this is my favorite kind. That's really good. How much is this? How much is this? Wow, I don't have anything to eat. It's so beautiful. Wow, it's so beautiful. I don't have any special food here, but I made it really special. It's so beautiful. The fish has no taste. It's so beautiful. We just came out of the restaurant and wow, the food was amazing. Everything was delicious. Nothing was a disappointment at all. What do you think, Holly? Our next stop is Quincy Market. It's been around since 1825. The reason it exists is that the mayor, Mayor Quincy, noticed that the traditional open market here was getting disorganized and crowded. So he decided to build a building to house the marketplace and organize it. Fun fact, he actually didn't want it named after himself, but actually wanted to name it Phelan Market. So that's why there's a building called Phelan and Right now, there's already a show happening outside. Someone doing something pretty crazy on a unicycle or a unicorn cycle. You know, when I talk to some people about going to Quincy Market, some mention it being a tourist trap. But just being around here, surrounded by food, thank you for trapping me here. And also, I think it's worth coming. It is a fun vibe here. All the delicious smells, foods, tastes, things to see. And also, you need to pick up a souvenir. Might as well get it here. We were at Quincy Market briefly, but it reminds me of Pike's Marketplace. It is a lot of shops, a lot of food, and you're gonna have a great time visiting here if it's your first time in Boston. Next, we're gonna keep following the Freedom Trail to drink at two famous bars. One bar where the revolution might have started at, and another bar where all the historical figures apparently met up a lot to drink. Next on our journey along the Freedom Trail, we're going to the Green Dragon Tavern. Amazing name, by the way. And under the sign, it says, Headquarters of the Revolution. Now, the Green Dragon Tavern has its roots since 1654, so it's technically the oldest historic bar in Boston, but it's no longer in its original location. Apparently, it's moved a few times, and the original building burnt down in 1850. But Paul Revere writes a lot in his memoir about meeting the other Sons of Liberty here, planning the revolution against the Redcoats. We are meeting here at the Green Dragon Tavern for our YouTube revolution. <laughs> All right, cheers. Now that we quenched our thirst, we're gonna continue on the Freedom Trail to continue and make it to Bunker Hill where Warren Tavern is our next destination on this historic walk of food and drinks. One of the cool things about this area is it's full of restaurants in this historic section of Boston and it smells amazing. Now we're not eating here, but if you ever come here, there is a ton of options to choose from that is very beautiful, scenic. Chloe, I know you're hungry and thirsty. It's off to Paul Revere's favorite watering hole, the Warren Tavern.
We made it to Warren Tavern at the end of the Freedom Trail. Now, Warren Tavern is the oldest running bar here in Boston. Built in 1780 after the British burnt down Charlestown, this was one of the first buildings erected in the city. And that makes sense because if you're rebuilding, you're gonna need booze. The wooden beams that is used in the structure of this building is actually from decommissioned Navy ships. So that means that these beams are even older than the building itself. So we're looking at wood that's probably 300 years old, keeping this place up. Most of the patrons here are local residents. So that means that very little tourists actually come here. And this place is packed. I love the atmosphere. For starters, we got two draft beers, a local IPA and a local Kolsch. Ooh, the night shift. It's a Whirlpool Pale Ale from Everett, Massachusetts, a local beer. I really like it. This is actually a little sour. I love a little sour beer. Yeah, how's the culch? Yeah, let's try. Oh, both these beers are good. This is nice and clean. That one has more body, but it's sour, and I like that one. I like that one better. <laughs> it works out. Cheers. All right, can we get started with the uh, tavern wings? Thank you. You're welcome. We got the tavern wings with the herb seasoning instead of the buffalo sauce. Oh, hot. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> that's good. I'm gonna add lemon juice to it. Oh, hold on. Honey, honey. Try it with the lemon. Mm. Way better. The skin is super thin, but really crunchy and crispy. The inside is not overcooked. It's not super tender, but it's not dry. Kind of wish there was hot sauce to dip this in though. Wow, this is so if this is a prelude of what's to come, I'm really excited for the other food because that is delicious. This was Paul Revere's favorite watering hole after the war. George Washington frequented this bar to meet a lot of people. Actually, apparently, his funeral speech was here. The baked haddock it is. This is recommended by the waitress. It's got mashed potatoes that is silky, and then the fish itself seems firm, succulent, and tender. Actually, I'm kind of drooling right now. I already added the lemon. Whoa! Oh! The breadcrumbs is sort of like a graham cracker breadcrumb. It's not what I normally would expect. I mean, it has a slight sweetness to it and that really threw me off at first, but it's actually pretty good. The fish, very meaty. Haddock is very meaty. Oh, what do you think? Yeah? Oh, she likes it. Oh, that's good mad potatoes. No chunks at all, but still very potatoey, very thick, but in the same time really smooth. We're gonna have mashed potatoes with the fish together. Oh. No, okay. That's the combination. Don't eat the fish by itself. That needs to be eaten with the mashed potatoes. It escalates it to another level. This is one of those situations where the sum is greater than its parts because that together is delicious. That makes me wonder if the potatoes is actually the star of this dish because I want to get steak just so I can eat it with the mashed potatoes. We had an amazing day here in Boston. Some of the most historic places that we've eaten and drank at. The history just made everything more amazing. Warren Tavern was such a perfect ending to the day that we highly recommend that at the end of the Freedom Trail, you stop by Warren Tavern because just being in there, the atmosphere, the history, just made that experience so memorable. We'll never forget our trip to Boston and we hope to see you in the next one. And don't forget to like and subscribe to continue following us on our journey across the world. Now that we've had, now that we quenched our thirst from, ah, it's a little oily, but not too oily. No, 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 no.
오케이. 오, 잘 왔지? 너무 잘 왔어. 예. Yeah. <웃음>